So we are going to prove that the natural log of x equals the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. Now the key property of the natural log of x is that it's the inverse function of e to the x. So we're going to start by considering some arbitrary function f that's an inverse to e to the x. And we'll show that if this is an inverse to e to the x, then it has to equal this integral. Now what does it mean for a function to be the inverse of e to the x? In particular, I'm going to consider a right inverse. What that means is that if we take e to the power of f of t, then that has to equal t. So what this equation is saying is that if we start with some number t, we first apply f, and afterwards we take e to the power of that result, that has to give us the original number back. So if we apply f first and then e to the x, those two cancel each other out in that order. So let's start with this equation, which tells us that f is an inverse to e to the x. This equation has to hold for all numbers t. And if two functions are equal for every single real number, then their derivatives also have to be equal. So we can take the derivative on both sides of this equation. Now the derivative of t with respect to t, that's just 1. On the left side, to take the derivative with respect to t, we can use the chain rule. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so we get e to the f of t here. And then by the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of f, which is f prime of t. Now with this equation, we can divide both sides by e to the f of t. And that'll give us f prime of t equals 1 over e to the f of t. But remember from the definition of the function f, we have this equation that e to the f of t equals t. So this fraction right here, 1 over e to the f of t, that's the same thing as 1 over t. And now we've proved that f prime of t equals 1 over t. To get back to the original function f, we can take the integral on both sides. In particular, I'm going to take the integral from 1 to x. So the integral from 1 to x of f prime of t dt equals the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt because these two functions on the inside are always equal, so their integrals have to be equal as well. Now on the left side, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. The integral from 1 to x of f prime of t dt, that's just f of x minus f of 1. So we take the antiderivative of f prime, which is just f, and then we plug in the two bounds x and 1. So this is equal to the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. Now, our ultimate goal is to prove that f of x equals this integral. So we're almost there, but what we need is to figure out what is f of 1. Well, to figure this out, we can go back to the original equation up here. We know that e to the f of 1 is equal to 1. That's just taking this equation and plugging in t equals 1. So how can we use this equation to find the value of f of 1? And let's try not to use natural logs here because we're trying to prove an equation about the natural log. We know that 1 is the same as e to the 0. So e to the f of 1 equals e to the 0. And if we look at the graph of e to the x, let's take a look here. We have x on the horizontal axis, e to the x on the vertical axis. The function is going to look something like this. So right here, this is the value of 1. The key fact here is that e to the x is an increasing function. So if we start with some value here, and we go to a bigger value of the input, then we're going to get a bigger value of the output. And what that means is it's not possible for us to have two different inputs with the same output. Because if we have two inputs that are different from each other, one of the inputs is going to be bigger, and that means that output is also going to be bigger. So it can't be equal to the other output. So e to the x is an injective function, which means that if the two inputs are different, the two outputs are also going to be different. So if f of 1 is not equal to 0, then e to the f of 1 would also not be equal to e to the 0. But these two are equal, 
So the only way that's possible is if f of 1 is actually equal to 0. And that gives us the value we need. This right here is just 0. And that gives us that f of x equals the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. So we just proved that if f is any right inverse to the function e to the x, then it has to equal this integral. So this proves that every right inverse to e to the x has to equal this integral. And since the natural log is an inverse to e to the x, the natural log also equals that integral. In fact, some calculus textbooks don't define the natural log as the inverse to e to the x. Instead, they define the natural log as this integral and prove that this integral is an inverse to e to the x. So this video is an example of how you can do that proof. Now, if you want to start with this integral and prove that it's an inverse to e to the x, you're going to need a little bit more work to prove that this is actually an inverse in a rigorous way. So if you're interested, I've left some more details in the description of how you can make that argument. But this shows us that there are two equivalent definitions for natural log of x. One is that it's the inverse to e to the x, and the other one is that it's the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt.